Content marketing is the process of creating and publishing useful content for your users on a consistent basis so that your content does the actual marketing for you. Hi, my name is C.M. Manjunath. I've been in the field of digital marketing for the last six years and I've been training content marketing since 2015. In this training course, you're going to learn all about content and inbound marketing. Let's get started. Content is at the heart of inbound marketing. Inbound marketing has the capability to turn a stranger into a website visitor. It can help you turn that visitor into a potential lead for your business. And that lead could potentially become a paying customer. And then that paying customer could potentially turn into a loyal fan for your brand. See, that is the power of inbound marketing. As you can see, a customer goes through a journey right from a stranger who turns into a visitor all the way to becoming a loyal fan of your brand. As a content marketer, it's our responsibility to walk the customer through this customer journey step by step. Inbound marketing is all about converting those potential customers into paying customers. Okay, so here are the objectives of the content marketing training. Number one, understand the importance of content marketing. Number two, you're going to learn how to apply what you've learned, the principles from, uh, from your learning from here. Number three, you're going to learn how to create and publish content that is useful for your customers. Number four, you're also going to learn how to publish it and promote it and, and really amplify that content. And last but not the least, you'll understand how to measure and analyze the results of your content marketing efforts. So that's what's in store, okay? Without much ado, let's jump right in. Welcome back. This is session number two of content marketing. In this section, we are going to talk about the why. There is a popular influencer online called Mr. Simon Sinek. Simon Sinek is of the opinion that most average mediocre companies seem to be doing their marketing communication incorrectly. What is incorrect? They start with the what is the product, how to use it, and then they talk about the why should customers buy it. On the other hand, he compares that with some of the most powerful companies in the world like Apple and Google. They are obviously doing something different. They start with the why. Okay, Big brands, powerful companies actually do their branding with the why. Why should you do what you do? Right. So why should customers buy from you? That is the question. Next, they move on to the what and the how. So this whole concept he calls golden circle. Golden circle is all about starting with the why, which is at the core, and then talk about the what and how, which is exactly what we are going to do. In this section, you're going to learn why content marketing is good for you. So here are some of the awesome reasons why inbound marketing and content marketing is so good for you. Number one, Interruption marketing or outbound marketing doesn't work as well as it, it used to in the past. It has its place, but it just doesn't work as well as it used to. Number two, like already mentioned, content is the heart of inbound marketing. And inbound marketing is very powerful. HubSpot, which is a CRM company, does a terrific job of inbound marketing. And they've explained or they've broken down the inbound marketing into four stages. Number one, attract stage. Number two, convert. Number three, close. And number four, delight. So we are going to go in depth into that and most of the training that we are going to cover will be in line with that, okay? So attract, convert, close, and delight. Okay, so number one, attract. Let's talk about attract stage. In this stage, a stranger turns into a visitor of your website. Okay, now how do you do that? 
you can do that by writing blogs using keywords using social media channels to reach out to potential customers who may not know about your brand yet that's the attract stage the second stage is about conversion so somebody comes to the website you make them take action like fill out a form click on a button make a call or whatever that turns into a lead now that lead could potentially become your customer in the close stage so stage number three close stage in which you make the customer buy products from you and stage number four of the fourth stage is delight stage where you provide the the customers the leads uh, some smart content right or or some some really useful information that they can use or, or some some really they're delighted they become your followers fans of your brand that's the four stages of HubSpot's um, inbound marketing strategy and uh, content marketing is also powerful not just because outbound is bad and, and inbound is all good but apart from that it's all about building relationships and that's what content marketing is actually about building relationships for a long haul um, so it's not just about a one-time sale it's about building that relationship with the customer so that you can provide them services over a period of time Another great reason why you should be focusing on inbound marketing is the fact that in today's world, people make the buying decision well ahead of time. What do I mean by this? A couple of years ago, I wanted to buy my car. The first thing that I did was not going to the car showroom. No. What I did was go to Google, search for the brand name and the price. A brand name plus the features which is what most of us do right now we go to Google or or any other favorite search engine of yours and you start searching information you start gathering information about what you want to buy you look at every aspect of the product or the service that you want to purchase now before I could step my foot into that car showroom I knew enough about my about the car that I liked as much if not more as the sales representative actually did which means I already made that decision even before I could set my foot into the car showroom. You see, that's how most of the purchases are happening as we speak in today's world. With the power of internet, people gather, ca gather data, information, understand what's going on, and then they decide even before they actually purchase. So these are some of the reasons why inbound marketing or content marketing is so very powerful in today's world so in today's world that's how the searches happen that's how people research and buy before they even buy they make the decision before they buy that's the power of inbound marketing content marketing and that's why it's important for you okay let's look at the attract stage in depth in the purchase funnel this is what I call the awareness stage. In this stage, we are going to find the right target audience. Number two, we are going to find out where these people hang out online. Which sites do they spend more time on? Then you create content that talks to them directly. And last but not the least, you look at the different means by which you can communicate that very effectively with the power of blogs perhaps search engine optimization or SEO emails social channels you name it look at all perspectives to reach out to that target audience that's what attract stage is about the second stage is about convert convert stage in the purchase funnel I call this stage research and evaluation of alternative stage in this stage it's about helping the customer understand making it easy on the customers to understand what the offer is about it's all about educating them as a content marketer it's my responsibility to educate my prospective customers to understand what I'm offering the solution that I'm offering I can do that with the power of blogs I could write a blog a how-to article for example an ebook and so on and so forth 
Last but not the least, the objective of this converge stage is to capture the customer details. It could be the name, phone number, email address, whatever the case may be, it's about capturing details. That's what the converge stage is about. Close stage. In this part of the purchase funnel, I call the buying part or the buying stage within the purchase funnel. As the name itself suggests, it's all about transforming that lead into a paid customer. As content marketers, it is our responsibility to make sure that we communicate as clearly as possible the benefits of the customer converting from a lead to a paid one. It is our job to understand and message in a customized way so that they understand what the offer is about. Right? And this is a conversion stage and therefore it's all about ensuring that the, the conversion process is simple and easy on the customer so that they can take action and you could turn them into a paid customer. That's what the close stage is about. So that brings us to the fourth stage and the last stage and that's called the delight stage. In the purchase funnel, I call this brand loyalist. Meaning what? What is the kind of value you offer after the sales is complete? It's all about after sales services. It's about providing the kind of services that you as a customer would love to have. In this stage, as content marketers, it's our job to encourage people for repeat transaction and referral businesses. It's a great way to make more money with existing customers by, by driving more referral business and so on and so forth. As a part of the Delight customer, our job is to ensure that our customers are absolutely delighted. You convert a paid customers or a paying customer into a brand loyalist by giving them exceptional services so that they, they come back to you over and over again for more of what you have to offer. That's about delighting a customer. Okay, so that brings us to the end of session number two. I hope it was as interesting for you as it was for me to teach. In this section, we looked at some of the key factors of inbound marketing. We understood the why you need to get into content marketing and inbound marketing. Number one, interruption marketing or outbound marketing does not work as well as it used to in the past. Number two, Inbound marketing is all about content and content is at the heart, the core of inbound marketing. We looked at the different stages including one, it's about your attract stage. Number two, it's about the conversions. Three, about closing that. And finally, four, about delighting your customer. We also understood how inbound marketing allows users and customers to really make their buying decision even before they actually buy it. And then we got in depth into the four stages of attract, conversion, close and delight. So that was about session number two. In the next upcoming session, you're going to learn all about purchase funnel and it's gonna be super exciting. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back to section number three. In this session, we are going to talk all about purchase funnel. Anybody that purchases anything online in today's world goes through this cycle, this, this funnel we call purchase funnel. Right at the top of the funnel is the awareness stage. In this stage, the user or the potential customer, a prospective customer, is going to discover that there is a problem, there is a gap in terms of where she is and where she wants to be. What does she want? Right, that's the awareness stage. For example, a person wants to understand content marketing, wants to become a content marketer. So in this awareness stage, it's about coming across a term called content marketing. So he or she goes to their favorite search engine, types in content marketing. You see, that is the awareness stage. They're not entirely clear about what it is about. They're just trying to get into that. They're trying to get their feet wet, trying to understand what that is about. Number two, 
in the purchase funnel is about research. Now in this stage, your prospective customer knows a little bit about content marketing. He or she wants to learn a little more about that. So they, they start reading blogs, watching YouTube videos, maybe join um, a training course like we do at Knowledge Hut. And then of course, they get better understanding of what's going on. Now, after the awareness stage, the research stage, then comes the evaluation of alternatives. In this part of the funnels, the purchase funnel, they're trying to evaluate between A versus B, for example, right? Inbound marketing versus content marketing, okay? Written blog posts versus video marketing content, and so on and so forth. They're trying to analyze and, and trying to find out which one would be best for them. That's evaluation of alternatives. For example, some could be really good with writing blogs, somebody else could be good with video marketing. Um, so by evaluating, they get to choose which one would be best for them. So that's stage number three. From evaluation of in, uh, alternatives comes the next stage, which is about the buying, buying stage, the purchase stage itself, where the person buys the product. For example, um, you buy uh, a training course from Knowledge Hut about content marketing, for example. Right now, that is the the buying stage, and then comes the post purchase. Now, what happens after you buy? For example, you learned about content marketing. Now, you have a couple questions. Are you able to communicate your ideas and ask questions and get them answered? If the tool, if the training offers you all that and more, then you're going to be a happy customer. Right, and that's post-purchase. It's about it's about purchasing any product, uh, whether it is a training course online, or buying a video camera. Um, you know, the, there's there's always a post-purchase or services part of the whole thing. And finally, the last part of this purchase funnel is about brand loyalists. Now, you you become a paid customer. You're happy, but are you as a customer willing to do more transactions with my company? Can you bring in more referral businesses to my business, right? That's, that's the kind of thing that we're talking about with brand loyalists. In this stage, as content marketers, our job is to communicate to the potential customer how cool our products and services are and how useful and how valuable our services can be for them. So this is the purchase funnel, okay? A quick recap, right at the top, awareness, next, comes research, third comes evaluation of alternatives, fourth buying, fifth after sales service or after purchase, the process after that, and finally brand loyalists. So these are the different stages that you as a content marketer need to keep in mind because the way you communicate at each stage to your prospective customer, to a, a fan, a business's fan, a business's loyal customer is going to be totally different. So be aware of these various stages within the purchase funnel. Okay, so that brings us to the end of session number three. In this session, we learned all about the different stages within the purchase funnel. In the next section, what we're going to do is we are going to get into the SEO and social media and, and the different channels uh, from a content marketing perspective. How to optimize your content so that it stands out. It reaches the people that it needs to reach out to. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back to session number four of content marketing and inbound marketing training here with me, CM Manjunath. In this section, we are going to understand the SEO and social media perspective of content marketing. Now, if you think about it, without content marketing, there is no SEO or social media. Without content, what would you optimize in the first place? Right? Right. So, let's look at the SEO perspective first of all. Your search engine optimization or SEO is about targeting the right keywords. So, content marketing should be powered by SEO in the sense you must be targeting the right keywords 
as a part of your content marketing efforts. You should use those keywords strategically within your content. That's what we're going to talk about in this section. Stay tuned. Your content marketing efforts should be powered by SEO. It's about using the right keywords and giving an excellent user experience. That's what good SEO is about and that's what good content is about. Um, so it's about ensuring that your content is useful and engaging for your potential customers. Also, the keywords needs to be strategically used or placed in the title and meta description. These are the two places where both the users as well as the search engine and social media crawlers read to understand what that content is about. So make sure you use appropriate title and meta description with the right keyword. You optimize them with the keywords. Next, we'll look at um, the user's experience perspective. Like I already mentioned, make sure the content is super useful for your users and it is engaging. Then comes the URL. Your URL needs to be descriptive yet succinct. Short and descriptive URL is what I'm talking about. So the content is not just for your website. If you choose to do guest posting on somebody else's blog, somebody else's website, it's important that you, that you create good content for that as well, for guest blogs and so on and so forth, because that can help you get links as a part of the link building process, and therefore that can boost your SEO really, really well. So those are some of the pointers that you need to keep in mind while doing SEO. SEO with content can be super powerful, okay? So now let's look at content with social media perspective. Social media, as you already may know, is very powerful as well. So content must be shared on social media channels and social media channels require good content for engagement and sharing purposes. So good content, must be shared on social media. Next, on social media, you need to put a snippet of text or snippet of, of whatever your content is. Now that needs to be attention grabbing if you really want the potential users of the social media to, to take notice of what you have created, the content that you have created. For that, the snippet that you create should be attention grabbing. So keep that in mind while posting on social media. So that's one, and, and apart from that, uh, you, can, you can create, publish, and engage with, um, with, the, with the power of content on social media groups. Groups can be a great way to really amplify your content, promote your content so that it reaches very targeted uh, set of customers for your business. Um, so that's about social media from from the snippets perspective, as well as sharing and engaging with the groups. And apart from that, generally, I would encourage you to create content that is highly engaging, ask questions, quizzes, and that kind of content really works. So that's what you need to do with social media, okay? So again, you would have understood that SEO, social media, and content all coexist. Without content, there can be no SEO, no social media. Okay, so the content is obviously at the heart of everything. Okay, here's a quick summary of what we've learned so far. Content, content, content is right at the heart of SEO and social media. I mean, you can't do SEO or social media promotions without content. And that's what we spoke about in this session. In this next session that's upcoming, you're going to learn all about targeting the right audience because right audience makes all the difference to your content marketing success. Stay tuned. Welcome back. In this session, we are going to talk about the most important concept targeting the right audience. Targeting the right audience can save you time, money, and a lot of heartache as well. Let's look at it in more depth. Okay, 
Now, when we talk about audiences, if you targeted all kinds of people for your product or service, one, you're going to spend in a lot of money. Two, you're going to put in a lot of effort as well. But you're not going to see the results that you would choose or you'd prefer. That's because it's talking to everybody, which essentially means it's talking to nobody. On the other hand, if your content is focused on a very specific group of people, also called as a niche audience. If your content is targeting a very specific niche a group of people, which actually represents what you are looking for. For example, a group of people who are interested in content marketing. Now this training would appeal to them. Right? That is what a niche audience is about. That way, the content that you put out, the communication that you're doing will be effective because it's very targeted and it's targeted to a specific group that's actually interested in what you have to offer. So the bottom line is to understand that a targeted right audience is so much more powerful and so much more effective for your business than looking at a wide range of audiences. May not work as well for your business. So be aware of that. So let's understand how to really come up with a targeted audience. How do you really find out what's the group of people that you need to capture? Now for this, I would suggest an exercise, an exercise which will define the customer persona, okay? Now this process is called defining a customer persona. It's as if the content that you're creating, whether it is a written blog post, an article, a how-to, or a video tutorial like this. It's as if I'm creating this content, keeping one person in mind, that's you. I am doing this video training just for you. And who are you? I define your persona. That's what a customer persona is about. So a customer persona can take into account many different things. So let's talk about the first thing in this list and it's called demography or demographics. Under demographic comes the age of the person. So for every product and or service, you should clearly define your target audience's age. Let's say my potential customer and his or her range is anywhere between 22 to 45, right? That That's just um, a number that I came up with, but you can actually do the research and find out who could be your potential customers and what could their age be under demographics as a category. Next, it's about the gender. Are your customers mostly men or women, right? So you, you actually write that down. Uh, then you look at the family background. Okay, if you were to sell a product that caters to the entire family, maybe the way you communicate will be very different from the way uh, you were to communicate if your product were to reach out to an individual, for example. Then the educational background. Now, um, what would the prospective customer's educational background be? Again, it's all to pinpoint and make your communication as effective and customized and targeted to the right audience. And last but not the least, you might also want to consider the income of the person. You know, if he or she can afford the product or service that you have to offer. Okay, so that's, that's what uh, demographics is about. A quick recap, demographics is all about reaching people that fit into this, this bucket um, of, of different factors that you want to consider. One is age, two is gender, Three is educational background, four is family background, and five, of course, it's about the income. All these can help you define if that is the right target customer and create content as if you're talking to that one individual. And then we'll expand that list and see whoever falls in that category so that the, the, the content that you put out 
and the communication that you intend to convey reaches that audience specifically. So, you understand demographics is one of the ways to understand the right target audience. Now we move on to the next one, which is called interests. Interests is all about what is your potential customer liking? What does he or she spends time on? For example, hobbies, work-related stuff. It could be um, the cause he or she supports. Any affiliations? What are his or her goals? You see, these things need to be really laid out in this section, in this section about interest. You really need to find out what that person likes so that you can, again, re, you know, talk to them in the language or use the words that make sense to them. Okay, as a part of targeting the right audience, we've looked at demographics. We looked at interests. Another part of the puzzle is called purchase funnel. Now, in this part, it's about understanding what is your prospective customer struggling with? What are some of the pain points? What are some of the obstacles that's stopping him or her from accomplishing a goal, right? So that's what you need to understand as a part of this purchase funnel. You'd also want to see what are the avenues of influencing that person. How does he or she get influenced? Number three, you're going to understand or know who their uh, current providers are. It could be a service or a product or whatever understand who the current providers are. Number four, you're going to understand um, what would be the role of that individual in the buying process. Is it a kid? If it's a kid, it's going to be the parent who is going to make the buying decision. So you might want to figure that out. And last but not the least, what words or what kind of communication would resonate and make sense to your prospective customers. So that's that's what you need to analyze in this stage within targeting the right audiences, right? So we've looked at demographics, interests, and now the purchase funnel. And the last part of this puzzle in the right audience targeting is about values and fears. Your job as a content marketer is to understand what are some of the likes and dislikes of that person. What's, what are some of the values? What does he or she like, your potential customer likes? For example, it could be a really quick service, good quality solution to a problem. That's what any customer would look for, right? Next, it's about what are the fears? What is stopping the user for buying, from buying your product or service? It could be a high price, an expensive product or a service, or it could be a poor value proposition, either one of them, right? So first of all, understand what he or she values, like what does he or she look forward to from a product or service? The fears, what are some of the things that turns them off? Those are the two things that you would want to keep in mind. So uh, by ensuring that your messaging is tailored to really add value in the sense uh, talk to them about what matters and hopefully your product or service also solves the problem that they're afraid of. Maybe your pricing is very reasonable. Whatever the case may be, understand your customer's pain points and then customize or tailor your communication and offer in such a way that it resonates and makes sense with your target audience. So that's what this is all about, targeting right audience. So that brings us to the end of this session about targeting the right audiences. How do you do that? One, you look at the demographics. Two, you look at the interests of the people. Three, you look at the purchase funnel perspective. And finally, we also looked at the values and fears of your potential customer, your target audiences. In the next session, we are going to dive deep into mapping your communication to each step within that purchase funnel. Don't miss out. Stay tuned. Welcome back. In the previous session, we looked at how targeting the right audience is crucial for your content marketing success. 
In this session, we are going to dig deep into how to map your communication with the different factors or different steps within the purchase funnel. So let's look at that now. The first one within the purchase funnel, uh, the stage with, that we talk about is called awareness stage. Like we've already discussed in session number three, your awareness stage is all about helping customers understand what the problem is, right? The customer discovers that there is a problem, there is a gap, they want to accomplish something or they want to buy something they just didn't know existed. So at this stage, they get to know that. So in this stage, the way we as content marketers need to communicate, need to message is by educating customers, your prospective customers. So what you're going to do is basically tell them what to do, how to do it, and how it's going to be of use to them, right? So that's how the communication mapping will happen in the very first stage of awareness. In awareness, it's all about educating people what, how, and how it'll benefit the customer. That's stage number one. Okay, in the second stage of how you map your communication, your messaging with the purchase funnel goes like this. Stage two within purchase funnel is about research. In this stage, the, the potential customer already knows that there is a problem. They are a little more specific. They are online reading blogs, watching YouTube videos, listening to podcasts, and they are a little more aware of what are the possibilities, what are the, what are the things that are available for them online or on offline, whatever the case may be. So how do you communicate with a customer that knows a little bit about what they are looking for? Well, it's very simple. As content marketers, our job is to help them understand what the product is about, what your product is about, how it can solve their problem. So in this, again, it's going to be educative, but it's going to be a little more specific compared to stage number one, where it was a little more generic. Okay, so in stage number two, which is research, we are going to give a little more specifics about our product. Maybe you're going to give them a little reviews of what other people think, a little bit of testimonials to build that trust factor. Okay, now all these things are going to play a role in stage number two. So we've looked at how you need to map your communication at stage number one, which is about uh, awareness. Stage number two, it's about um, research. How should you communicate with the customer who's already researching? Uh, the third point or the third stage is all about evaluation. In this stage, the potential customer is comparing and reviewing your products, right? They are looking at product A versus product B. Uh, they are comparing your brand versus another brand on so on and so forth so how do you how do you really communicate in such a stage uh, at this stage also the customer potentially is seeking samples or demo and stuff like that so your your communication should be tailored to that kind of um, uh, expectation from the customer uh, you should be able to talk a little more specifically about what your product or service is about how uh, it compares against another product. You don't need to degrade another product or another uh, brand, but you can always highlight uh, what makes your product or service so much better than someone else's. So, like I told you, it's all about comparisons and that's why it's called the evaluation stage. So, help the customer make an intelligent decision. Let them um, choose an option to go with. And also, at this stage, if I, were, uh, if I were writing a blog post or, or, or a landing page or anything, I would uh, ensure there is a clear call to action. You, know what? You, you would want to transition the customer from this stage to the next stage, which is to close and make that, uh, make that purchase. So it's important to keep that in mind. Um, provide very specific information. Uh, help your customer make a, a, an intelligent decision and show them the next step of action. That will lead 
you to get more sales. Now that brings us to the next um, stage within the mapping of your communication with the purchase funnel. In this stage of the purchase funnel, we are going to talk about the actual purchase itself, the buying stage. So what happens is the, the potential customer has already understood what the problem is the, in the awareness stage. They've researched about the different options available. Three, they have even evaluated the best of what might be, be, be good for them. And then comes the purchase. At this stage, they're trying to look at the star rating, the reviews, the testimonials, and so on and so forth. So as a content marketer, you and I should focus on providing exactly that to the customer. At this stage, the customer is already almost made up the decision to buy the product. You're just going to help them with how your customer support, your services could be really handy for them, how some of the key differentiators, your unique selling propositions could make or break the sale right here. So communicate that effectively and you probably have a sale. Most probably you have a sale. That's stage number four, the purchase. So that brings us to the last stage here within the section and this stage is called brand loyalists. It's all about how you would turn a paid customer into a brand loyalist, a loyal fan of your brand. How do you do that? You know, in, in this stage, the customer's already bought the product. He is talking to his friends, his, his family, his relatives, telling how good or bad the product is. Hopefully it is good. Uh, so this is a stage where you would want to make your communication even more smoother. What, what you want to do in this case is really provide them with more case studies, right? More stories about how this product has, has uh, help people, how it has empowered people doing something uh, in the past, right? You, you give success stories, case studies, and you can even set them up for a free trial on, on something, or uh, you offer them an upgrade. Uh, so these are the different options. These kind of communication will let the customers um, feel delighted and try even more of your services, which is our end goal. We want the customers coming back to us for more and they also become our uh, ambassadors, really talking uh, all the amazing things that our product or service has done for them. So in this case, your communication should be focused on giving success stories, setting, um, uh, setting them up for trial or upgrading them and so on and so forth. So that brings us to the end of this section about how you can map your uh, purchase funnel with the communication that you're doing with the potential customer and eventually a paid customer as well. Uh, in the next section, we are going to talk about the different, different types of content, the different formats of content that we could actually use uh, to make our content marketing so much more powerful. So definitely it's going to be useful. Stay tuned. Welcome back. In the previous section, we looked at how uh, mapping the content to the purchase funnel makes such a huge impact on the overall experience of the customer. In this section, we're going to dive deep into the different types and formats of content that you could be creating for your potential customers or paying customers. So let's get into that. The types of formats, while there are plenty of them, in this section, we are going to talk about eight most important ones. The first one is called white paper. A white paper is an in-depth guide into whatever your product or service is about. So you want to make it educative, entertaining, but more importantly, you'd want to keep the different factors that would help the customer accomplish his or her goal. It's going to be about how to overcome an obstacle, right? So make sure this white paper of yours is comprehensive is a useful guide filled with value and actionable steps. White paper. Another important content type that is crucial for your content marketing success is data. In today's world, 
everything runs on data. So if you can provide some statistics, some numbers that can support your claim, that's going to be very useful. So when writing content, whatever the type of content, along with being educative and informative, also what you want to keep in mind is that you provide data and information that supports your claim. That's going to be super important for you. The third type of content that's going to be very useful and very popular is called blogs articles. So in this type of content you'd already have come across, it's, it's about how to's. If you want to communicate how to do something, this is a great way, a great co content type to focus on. Uh, your opinions, um, if you want to write a list of things, for example, 10 things that you need to keep in mind while doing content marketing, for example, that's called a listicle. Uh, list down 10 different things or, or whatever the number is. So this is super important as well. You see, blogs are a great way to reach out to potential customers, to educate them, inform them, help them make intelligent decisions. Again, so there are how-tos, there, uh, there are listicles, there are opinions, and so on and so forth. So yeah, just keep an eye on the articles and blogs. It can be very useful as well. The next content type, which is going to be very useful as well, is called webinars. Webinars are great for demonstration purposes. If you want to show how your product works, it's going to be super useful. Apart from that, uh, it, it kind of makes sense to use webinars at the very early stage of the funnel right at the awareness stage. If you want to invoke interest in a person to take action, you know, to, to join your tribe, to, to, um, to try your product, or just basically educating them of what's in store for them. So webinars are great for, uh, for the early stage in the funnel process. While webinars could be excellent for awareness stage, there's the more popular cousin of webinars, also called as videos. Video content type is super powerful. Everybody in the content marketing world is saying that the future of content marketing is going to be video. Uh, it's, it's very clear, right? If you were to make a sale, the best way to make a sale is to be in person. But with the online world, it's it's even more easier. You don't need to be with the person face to face. You can use your video, which is the second best thing to really promote any product and make that sale happen. Videos are super powerful and that's the future. And I'm in total agreement. Video marketing, the content type of videos are useful because one, people get to see how a product works. For example, if you wanted to demonstrate how the product works, it could be great. Two, you can tell a story. Unlike writing a blog post, which is good, with a video, there's a tone of voice, there is emotions, there is so much going on in terms of the connection, right? So that's why videos are a great type of content to create for your potential customers. Another really popular type of content is called podcasts. Podcasts doesn't require you to visually be present in the sense like watching a video for example you will need to focus your uh, visual as well as your auditory aspects to to understand whereas a podcast is about listening so this is another great way to really tell your story convey your message and help people understand and connect emotionally so there are lots of benefits to doing podcasts so podcasts is another great way to communicate your ideas effectively. Content type to keep, uh, keep a tab on, yeah. So this content type that I'm gonna talk about is something that's very popular as well and I'm sure you would have come across and it's called infographics. Infographics are visual representations of data, reports, or whatever uh, the, the content that you want to communicate whatever message that you want to communicate can be put in a visual format and that's what infographics are. Remember, pictures are worth a thousand words. The average attention span of a person in today's online world seems to be at around eight seconds. Our attention span is, 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 is reducing all the time. So, what do you do? 
In such a case, creating content that makes it easy on users rather than long-form content, which is still good, is something called checklists. So that's number eight. Content type number eight is checklists. By using checklists, people can quickly look at what's going on, what's been already accomplished and what's not and so on and so forth. Checklists are, checklists are super good for content as a, as a type of a content. Um, so it also acts as a great way, uh, an instrument to really exchange information. So if you want to get somebody's email address, for example, you can use a checklist as a lead magnet. You give something in return for something, which in this case, information exchange. You provide information, some kind of guide, a checklist in, in return for their email address. Okay, so that brings us to the end of session number seven. In this session, we understood what are the different types of content that we can create that can really have a significant impact. Number one, we looked at the first content type, which is a white paper. Number two, reports. Reports is all about data. Number three, we looked at webinars, which is great for uh, potential customers at the top of the funnel who are in the awareness stage. Then we spoke about videos and how videos are the future of marketing. Five, we looked at podcasts uh, using auditory or your uh, listening skills to learn and educate your potential customers. So that was number six. Number seven, we looked at infographics, how um, visual representation of the data could be so much useful for your potential customers. And then finally, uh, the eighth one was checklists. Checklists are a great way to give you or give your potential customers a quick rundown of what needs to be done. Uh, and then you can exchange their uh, data like name or email address. You can use checklists as a lead magnet as well. So these are the different um, content types that we've looked at in this session. In the next session, which is going to be very interesting as well, it's about storytelling. In the world of eight second attention spam, how are you going to tell your story and stand out from the rest of the crowd? Stay tuned. Welcome back to this very exciting section about storytelling. I call this section standing out from the crowd. The reason I do that is because each one of us has a story. We tell our own stories and nobody can tell that as well as I could tell about my own, right? So your brand also has a story and it's all about how you are going to tell your story to set yourself apart from the rest of the crowd. And there is an ocean of, of content out there. There is tons of stories out there. How's your story going to stand out? In this section, you're going to learn all about that. So stay tuned. You should tell stories. Stories are an ancient, tried and tested method that works. So tell stories. But what kind of stories do you tell? As a content marketer, it's important that you tell stories that are relevant, that are engaging to your customers. It should emotionally connect with the person so that he or she understands what you're talking about. There should be a connection. And finally, it should have meaning in it. Your brand story must have an emotional connect and a strong meaning and relevance, that's when it will have any effect on your potential customer. It's not just about the story. It's also about how you tell that story. What I mean by that is the tone, the voice that you use to tell your story can make a difference as well. It's one of the major factors about how people perceive you your product, your service, or your brand. So the tone and the voice makes it unique. Make sure your tone, your voice of your brand is unique. But most of all, let there be that human touch. It's that emotion that gets people connected with your brand. Tell your story with your own voice, a tone that is unique to you. Get started. 
Okay, so we've looked at telling the story. How you can have your own unique voice and tone that represents your brand and you from the rest of the crowd. Now, I'm going to talk about a couple of top influencers online that I really look up to. Number one is a person called Gary Vaynerchuk or Gary V. Uh, he's the owner of VaynerMedia, one of the most popular guys on social media, one of the most powerful influencers on social media. The reason I like him is because of his, his, his enthusiasm, uh, the energy that brings that he brings to the table it's is tremendous i love that so your content your voice your tone all need to have that kind of uniqueness let there be uh, energy let there be a little bit of um, um, a, a positivity uh, if you may uh, in in the way you you communicate another type of content uh, or storytelling that really impressed me is quirky. When you think about a person like Avinash Kaushik, um, he's brilliant with, with web analytics and stuff like that. And his, his voice is more quirky, very unexpected kind of a thing. Uh, it's a little humorous. It's, it's nice overall. So if you want to have your brand with a, a quirky voice, you could do that as well. And the, and the third one that I really like is being genuine, right? Being um, really being honest and transparent and for that the one guy that i really look up to is pat flynn from smartpassiveincome.com so these are the three kinds of people that have uh, completely different styles of really communicating and telling the brand story but all three are impressive and unique from their own perspective and that's what i'm talking about when you come up with your your brand story make it unique make it stand out lend your voice uh, really make it your own and and that's what this session is about telling your story voice tone and making it your own so so far you've seen how to make it all on your own create your own story coming up with your own voice we've also looked at some of the top influencers online like Gary V Avinash Kaushik and Pat Flynn who are all great in their own style now the next part is about tone what is the tone that you'd like to adapt for your business for your branding for your content creation process and that's what we're going to look at see the tone depends on a couple of things one who is your target audience if it's about serious audience you you might want to communicate in in a serious tone of voice if your uh, target audience is young and hip and funny then you might want to take a lighter view of, uh, of, of your content maybe you should uh, add a little bit of humor and a little bit of logic and all that together so it really depends on the kind of audience that you're targeting and the 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 concept or, or the topic that you're discussing on uh, here are a couple of uh, tones that you might want to keep in mind the first one is called empathetic where you keep your customers pain points in mind and create content from that perspective that's called empathetic the second one is more about data research oriented so if people uh, that read your content are more focused on numbers and statistics and and valid claims uh, then you might want to consider adapting that approach data research and statistics then of course there is the honest way of doing something so you can uh, you can be very upfront um, be as transparent as possible which is what i like about pat flynn like i told so that's a tone that you could adapt for your content creation process and the and the fourth one is called didactic which is what we are doing right now i am teaching you something so if you if your if your content is about teaching somebody something then the didactic uh, didactic approach would be the right one or the right tone of voice to adapt so that's what making your own is all about in this section we looked at the importance of storytelling we looked at the voice some of the top influencers voice on the internet and then we also looked at the tone in the next section you're going to learn something even more interesting
so far you've put in all the effort to create an amazing story, a great piece of content, um, you know, picking up the, the type of content that you like. It could be a webinar, a, a video, a blog post, or whatever the case may be. Now you're all set. Your content is ready. It's in the bag. It's about promoting. How do you promote that content that you spent so much time and money on? That's what we are going to learn in the next section. So stay tuned. Welcome back. This is section number nine. In this section, you're going to learn about how to promote your content. So you've done the hard work of creating the content that would resonate with your potential customers. Now it's time to take it to the world. And that's what we are going to learn here. Now, it's not just enough to create and publish content. You need to reach out to a wide audience, to the world at large. How do you do that? There are many different channels and we are going to discuss about most of them at least in this section. And then it's about ensuring that the right target audience finds your content. They find you through your content. That's the whole concept of promoting content. Now we are going to discuss the different ways that you can actually promote your content online. First of which is going to be search engine optimization, SEO for short. People love SEO because it's absolutely free. You create great content, make it awesome, and people can find you on Google or any other top search engine absolutely freely. That's the beauty of search engine optimization or SEO. So what are you supposed to do if you were to promote your content for free on Google or any of the top search engines like Bing, Yahoo, or other search engines. So what you need to do is to do a proper keyword research. That's the foundation. Step number one, do your keyword research properly. Number two, use your keywords strategically within the content. We already discussed about that, uh, about the title, the meta description, the URL, the headings, the content, the subheaders, and so on and so forth. All that is going to play a role in how well you rank on Google, how, how well your content ranks on Google. So that's one. Uh, uh, other factors that will impact your SEO or Google ranking are things like the mobile responsiveness. Make sure that your website is mobile friendly. The page load speeds. Again, in another section, we spoke about how uh, our users' attention span is, is, is reducing by the day. Google is super focused on getting those page load speeds really, really quickly. So these are some of the factors that you'd want to keep in mind if you want to promote your content successfully on search engines. So a quick recap, one of the greatest and the best ways to promote your content for free online is going to be through SEO. Do the keyword research, use the keywords strategically in, in the different elements like HTML tags such as title, meta description, URL, and so on and so forth. Make sure your website is user friendly, mobile friendly, and it loads super quick. Now you found an easy way to promote your content for free. That's on search engines. Another easy way and very powerful way, equally powerful, if not more powerful, is social media. Every time you create and publish a piece of content, make sure absolutely that is shared on the social channels. Now, which social channel is completely up to you. But if you were a B2B, that is business to business, then ideally I would encourage you to look at LinkedIn as a possible avenue to promote your content. On the other hand, if your content is about business to consumers or B2C, then you might want to consider Facebook or Twitter. So this is the kind of spectrum that you would want to take a look at, whether you want to go LinkedIn, be all professional, or you want to consider Facebook and Twitter on and, and, and other avenues really uh, in, in today's world Instagram Pinterest um, are, are visually appealing uh, why not YouTube YouTube is going to be great for video content and and so on and so forth so all these are various social media platforms that can really 
put the word out can really help you promote your content in the most significant manner possible. The third type of marketing or a way to really promote your content is through influencer marketing. What is influencer marketing? It is a process by which a brand ambassador kind of a person, an influencer on any social media platform could be promoting your piece of content. How do you do that? First of all, content marketers need to make a list of the potential influencers, their influencers on, you know, in, a, in a specific niche. You make a list of them, you follow them on social media platforms, look at what they are doing for the community, encourage them, even promote their products and services if it makes sense to your business and if it's relevant to your target audience. That way you grab their attention, you grab the influencer's attention while doing so. Now what happens after that is that when you come up with your own content, when you come up with your own products or services, you can always reach out to these influencers that way they promote your product and services as well as your content. Now that's what influencer marketing is about. Provided it's relevant, if the influencer is relevant to your niche and the content that you're creating is of value to, 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 to their community as well. So that's what influencer marketing is about. So, so far we've looked at SEO, we've looked at social media and the third most powerful one which is influencer marketing. Okay, we'll look at one other free option for you to promote your content online. And that is, again, within the social media platform, there are a bunch of them like LinkedIn articles. You could promote your content by writing articles on LinkedIn. It used to be called LinkedIn Pulse in the past. Um, you have Quora. Quora is a, is a question and answer website where you can share answers to questions that people put up on the platform. That way you establish yourself in a, as an authority figure in your niche. That's a great way really for people to find you through the content that you publish. And we look at one last option within the, the content promotion techniques. The last one in this list is a paid technique called content promotion or content recommendation engine. Now there are websites such as Tabula, uh, there is Rev Content, there is uh, Outbrain and, uh, and there's a bunch of them really who promote your content on their platform. So most of them are paid stuff so you might want to keep an eye on that one. So these are the different ways that you can really amplify the content that you created. It's a great way to promote the content that you put in your heart and soul into, okay? So it's not just about writing, creating, and publishing. It's about promoting and amplifying. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this section. Section number nine about how to promote and amplify your content using SEO, social media channels, influencer marketing, um, content recommendation engines and so on and so forth. I hope you found this useful. In the next section, we are going to jump into measuring and analyzing that data. So after you created the content, after you published it and even promoted it, how many people engaged with it, how did they react and much more. So stay tuned. Welcome back. This is the most important section because it's all about measuring and analyzing. In this section, section number 10, you'll understand how measuring and analyzing the data is crucial for your content marketing success. You're going to see from a purchase funnel perspective, how the measure and analyzing of data happens. Ideally, if you want to measure and really analyze the data for your content marketing efforts. It needs to be coupled or connected with the purchase funnel. 
if it's an early buyer, what are some of the metrics that you would go, you're going to look at? If it's late during the purchase funnel, what are some of the metrics that you're going to look at and so on and so forth. So it's going to be exciting. We have a lot of uh, things in store. Stay tuned. If you want to know if your content is giving you the dividends that you and your business is actually looking for, then measuring is going to be important. Like I told you, there are different stages within the purchase funnel and your data analysis must be aligned with the different steps within the funnel. So let's look at that. Stage number one is about the early stuff, early stage. In the early stage of content marketing, what you're looking at is one, you're looking at the, at the traffic that comes to your website, website traffic. Two, you're looking at links because links or backlinks can help boost the ranking on Google search engine, for example. That's something that you'd look for. Three, you'd look for share of content. How many people are really sharing the content that you produce and distributed? How many people are engaging with the content? How many people are, are talking about what you wrote, your opinions, your blog posts, your video, whatever the content may be about? So these are the early stage metrics, okay? So yeah, keep in mind, in the early stage, your content needs to reach as many people as possible. And thus, the metrics such as website traffic, shares, links, engagement play a cru crucial role. And you understand that, that your content is getting some kind of tangible uh, reach to people. Now that you're clear about the early stage where you're looking at people and how many people are really engaging with your content, sharing your content, and so on and so forth, after they come to your website, after they read your content, after they watch your amazing video or infographic or podcast, what do they need to do? They, those visitors need to turn into leads for your business. Now, leads in turn have to turn into sales and conversions and so on and so forth. And that's the next stage. In this next stage of measuring and analyzing, you'd want to look at how many website visitors turned into leads. How many of those leads turned into paid customers and how many paid customers are bringing in referral business. So these are all going to be the key performance indicators or KPIs in terms of your content promotion uh, efforts. Your job as a content marketer doesn't end with somebody purchasing the product and we already know that. We've spoken enough about how people purchase and after that there is after sales services and also there is that uh, brand loyalty building. All that happens with content marketing. Now that's the third stage. In the third stage we're talking about how do people feel about your services after the sale has happened. And that's a crucial part, after sales. In this case, our content marketing should also target or look at metrics such as turnaround time to fix a problem, the quality and the accuracy of your problem solving and helping your customer uh, get the best service possible. So those are some of the metrics that you would absolutely keep an eye on if you were tracking your content marketing efforts from a measure and analyze perspective. This brings us to the end of section number 10. In this section, we've discussed about uh, data measuring and analyzing the, the results, the numbers, okay? We've talked about the initial stage, the late stage, and after sales stage of your purchase funnel. So you need to uh, track various metrics based on the different stages within the purchase funnel. So that brings us to the end of this section. Okay, welcome back. So this is the end of this training session and it's all about content marketing. Now, if you want to be a top class content marketer, if you want to become a successful content marketer. Here are the 10 things that you absolutely must do. Number one, become customer centric. Number two, define a customer persona. Number three, understand your customer journey. Number four, generate ideas. Number five, create content. Number six, 
look at all the different social media channels that you can promote on. Number seven, lend your own voice. Number eight, identify influencers that can promote your content. Number nine, identify the tools that you're going to use that can help you with your content marketing efforts. Number 10, it's about measuring and analyzing. That's it. So like I said, that's the end of this training session. We hope you enjoyed as much as I enjoyed teaching this to you all. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Um, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And uh, if you have any questions, if there is any content that you would like us to create on, please reach out to us and we'll be happy to uh, try our best to help you. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Bye.